Okay, this past weekend I got a chance to go out to Berea and talk to different Browns rookies. In a different video, I, I've talked about my impressions of Miles Garrett. Let's look at some of the others. I'm going to start with Jabril Peppers. Peppers, basically Peppers' agent, made a very poor judgment early where he advised his client not to sign the participation agreement to take part in the, rook in the rookie workouts on Friday when Miles Garrett and everybody else was. And that came upon him, you know, failing the drug test with the diluted thing. Saturday, he wised up and signed it. Again, it wasn't Pepper's call. It was his agent. He was back out there. And for right where there are all those rumors, oh, he's not going to sign that because he's afraid of being drug tested. I mean, Pepper's right now has to go out there and just do all the right things because this kid could play. Um, and the Browns are excited to have him, but we don't need any of this off-field stuff. Uh, my understanding is Peppers, by the way, is represented by the same agency as uh, Joey Bosa. This will be interesting to see how this works out, because if you remember last year, Bosa was a holdout. He didn't sign until after the regular season started, so keep an eye on that. Another guy I talked to, and this is really sad for me, Howard Wilson was his name. He was a fourth-round pick, defensive back out of Houston, really not a whole lot bigger than I am. I mean, he says he weighs 180. I'm not so sure about that. And he says he's six foot. I'm not so sure about that. But this is a kid who had five interceptions exceptions, scouts liked him and so on. We're talking and he goes, you know, because I, I mentioned we were talking about being recruited out of high school and he said, well, I only had three offers. He I said he had Houston, SMU, and Louisiana Tech. I looked him up on the ESPN chart. He had zero, zero recruiting stars next to his name coming out of high school. So he really was a kid that uh, you know, had to earn his way. He had an ACL injury early in his career at Houston, came back from that. He talked about how Tom Herman, the former Ohio State assistant coach, came into Houston and really brought some discipline to the program and helped them. And I mean, I just fell in love with this kid's enthusiasm. And he goes out there, and he ends up with a fractured kneecap in the practice. It was just like, boom. By the way, Wilson was smart. He signed his contract before that injury, so his signing bonus and all that is guaranteed. And that's not a bad thing to do. Um, again, you want to get the best deal possible, but it, it just showed anybody could get hurt any time. A couple other Browns rookies that were sort of fun to talk to. Uh, Zane Gonzalez, the kicker they drafted from Arizona State, he was like, man, this place is great. The, the street is named after a kicker, Lou Groza Boulevard. The name of the kicker is on the building. And I said, Zane, they love kickers in Cleveland, whether it's Lou Groza or Don Cockroft or Matt Barr, or, of course, the patron saint of kickers since the Browns came back, Phil Dawson. He said that he'd gotten Dawson's phone number and he's going to set up and they're going to talk on the phone, which is a great thing. By the way, I like the, the pick of a kicker in the seventh round, a guy that's the elite kicker in college football. Seven of nine from over 50 yards. Those are the only two field goals he missed all year. He did win the Lou Groza Award, so that was a good one. Then the last kid I talked to was Matthew Days, and he is the running back from North Carolina State. He was the second last player picked in the draft number 252 252 the next guy is 253 he was Mr. Irrelevant it was a quarterback from Mississippi that was picked so second last guy and and Days had a really nice career he was second team all ACC at North Carolina State um, he's a pretty good pass receiver uh, I was glad the Browns took him you could never have enough running backs but it's he, he kind of helped me sort of crawl into his skin of what it was like on draft weekend he figured somewhere for fourth, fifth, sixth round and watching, you know, round after round going by and his name's never called, nobody's there. He said, so finally, his girlfriend came over and I guess they went out to some drive-in place to get something to eat in the afternoon. He just there because he figured he wasn't going to get drafted. And there he was, picked number 252. And he, as he said, one, he's gratified the Browns took him. But two, he wants to show a whole lot of people. And, you know, that they were wrong. But this guy, I mean, this, he gained like close to 1,200 yards at NC State. He caught a lot of passes. I think, he, I think he had 10 touchdown passes. It just shows how competitive it is. You know, so many of these kids are playing college football. So many think they're going to get drafted. Some of them have good careers, and they still don't get drafted, or they barely do. So that's kind of my talking to some of the lesser guys there and, and some impressions.